Hello, Barry. <laughs> Hi, Charles. Good to see you. It's been, yes, it's been such a long time since we haven't uh, connected. Um, probably five five years or so uh, when I was uh, back at uh, Oxford as a chef in residence at Charles Spencer's lab, and we were spending a lot of, a lot, lot of time together, co-creating events and uh, and papers even. Um, yeah, we did we did lots together, and uh, it was so good to have a mixture of psychologist, uh, philosopher, and chef researcher. And and yeah. I think we both found that there's so much to be done around food, uh, the whole experience of it, as well as our sensory uh, engagement with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So um, we're recording this call because we feel there's something important that we want to share with uh, with, with 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 the audience. Um, when it comes to the relationship to the crisis um, and uh, and our awareness of uh, of what's happening um, in terms of um, how uh, COVID nineteen might provoke um, anosmia, right? And right. that might be a, a symptom um, that is different from the flu symptoms that some folks may um, uh, just have a reduced ability to smell or no smell at all, right? Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yes, so it, it, it's looking more and more as though the sudden loss of smell is a biomarker for, or a marker for COVID-19. You can be asymptomatic. You might have none of the other symptoms, no cough, no fever, but you suddenly lose your sense of smell. How do you notice that? Well, the soap you're using, the hand sanitizer you're using, it just doesn't smell of anything. And I think most people will discover it by noticing they'll say, I can't taste anything. I can't taste yeah. anything in the food. So you and I know that's not necessarily due to their taste buds. It's due to the sense of smell. So why don't you say something about that? Yeah, right. So I remember um, learning as I was um, starting to do research with Charles Pence, and he would always say that, uh, you know, and, and you, we, we had these very lively conversations about it. If there, there was a percentage of the flavor experience that was either coming from our, from our nose or from our taste buds. But the point is that olfaction is uh, the dominant flavor sense, right? It is yeah. most of what we perceive as flavor of foods um, actually comes from information that goes through our olfactory bulb um, and is integrated then with taste, what that is perceived on the tongue. Um, and of course, all the modul modulatory effects that sound or touch may have as well and vision as well. But smell is really the main flavor sense smell is the main flavor sense and so when people say i can't taste anything we like them to do the following check uh you say okay um your food doesn't seem to taste of anything put some salt on your tongue or put some sugar on your tongue or squeeze some lemon juice on your tongue can you taste that quite a lot of people now who are experiencing this uh loss of smell symptom for COVID-19 will say, oh, yeah, I can taste that, but I can't taste anything else. And now they'll realize how much of everything else that was contributing to flavor was actually due to smell. So if you take smell out of the picture, it's a big loss. Mm -hmm. And so that's, a, that's an important thing because we might be thinking that we don't have any flu symptoms and uh, we're just going around and maybe being less careful about uh, sneezing in our in our elbow, or um, or how we kind of relate to the objects that we touch and to other people, right? Even in our families. So yes. this is something that um, uh, we were just catching up, and we decided to record this call so we could share the recording of this call to raise awareness about um, how important it is if you feel any symptoms of taste loss or that you, the food doesn't, doesn't taste as good, as intense. Um, it's actually smell that you may be losing. And that is one of the symptoms of uh, being infected with COVID-19. So um, be aware of that and spread the information. Uh, and that's um, kind of what we wanted to, to raise awareness on. Um, we, also, we also want to let people know, Charles, that for, there are quite a few reports now coming up online on social media of people getting the sense of smell back because it's really quite debilitating when you've lost it. It's only when you've lost it, you realize how important smell is. You don't know what, mm -hmm. it's, what you've got till it's gone. But, but a lot of people, we don't know how many are getting it back. There's a big international research team, the global 
COVID-19 chemosensory research group, international group around the world who are now going to look at this and are formulating a questionnaire to get information from the public. But there is some evidence, anecdotal, that people are recovering their sense of smell. So don't despair straight away if, it's, if you now notice that it's not there. But if you can't taste any of your food, try smelling the hand sanitizer, try smelling you know, soap. If you get nothing, Perfume. then it's your sense of smell. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, there is, and then we realize how important olfaction is, right? Uh, and how important it is for our well-being and our and our connection to kind of uh, everyday little pleasures, right? Yeah. So I just wanted to, to to share with the audience, right? There's so you're um, Smith Barry C on Twitter. Do you use Instagram or you're just on Twitter? Just on Twitter. I might just consider. It. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. You just have to take to be good at selfies. Uh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, so Barry is the director of the Center for the Study of the Senses at the University of London, uh, which was, we had a, um, a, a collaboration, a partnership with the Cross Model Research Laboratory at that time, um, doing research on, on the senses. And, and of course, food is where all the senses come together. So there was a lot of research uh, on food in particular uh, with uh, Spence Lab. Um, but um, I'm curious, uh, you know, now, now that we're here, um, if you want to share a bit more of what you're working on now and, and, and how you uh, envision um, this uh, sensory science and this kind of philosophy of, um, uh, of the senses and of, of the mind um, can uh, serve to eventually live more um, healthy lives and, and, and happier lives. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm curious. Yes, I, I, I'm very happy to talk about that. And also, this is something that you and I have talked about a lot. So Charles is a, uh, an international chef and researcher who I first met uh, in Colombia with Charles Spence. And he then came to Oxford and was a researcher in, in Charles's cross-modal lab. So we've been doing this sort of thing for a while. Now, we know that when we're eating, what we call tasting is always taste, touch, and smell. And we know that the combination of those and the interrelation of those different sensory modalities affects both the pleasure, acceptability, and identification of what we're eating. If you modulate one or the other, things will seem very different. Now, we, we have worked for a long time about how to make our experiences of food better, how to enhance the pleasure of eating. But Charles and I also did a project with Charles on what can interfere with it? And one of the things that we worked on, very famous paper that we wrote together, uh, was on aircraft noise. So white noise in your ears of 89 decibels or above can diminish your brain's ability to pick up information from the tongue, salt, sweet, sour. And so things can seem much less intense when you're eating them on an aircraft with that noise in your ears. Noise cancelling headphones, that seems to reduce the problem. But also, there, is, there are some foods which are immune to this effect of noise impacting on tasting, and that's umami, the fifth taste. And when you eat things rich in umami under these conditions, you will still get the pleasure and the brightness of your food. So what's full of umami on an airplane? Tomato juice. And we worked out that people drink tomato juice and Bloody Marys on an airplane and at no other time, and they're right to do it. So this is a way in which our research has shown uh, how you can improve experiences and, and what's interfering with them or enhancing them. Another thing that I'm doing at the moment is I'm working with a very talented cook, Ryan Riley, who puts on uh, free cooking classes for people with cancer undergoing chemotherapy. And these are called mm -hmm. Life Kitchen classes. And now Ryan and I have worked together on his book uh, to provide information about what can, what can you do to work around some of the problems when your sense of smell goes down or when you're, you're not experiencing taste as much or when your mouth is very sensitive? So these are, these are ways in which we can do good things for people who need it, but then we yeah. can also remind ourselves at the rest of our, our lives when things are going well, that we're sensory beings with taste, touch, and smell. And yet most of our experience these days is audiovisual. It's behind screens like these. 
So we're getting a little bit. But when bit... we eat, we don't pay attention. We don't connect with the food that we're eating and we're watching a screen, either on television. And, and even when you were mentioning the, the, the impact of sound and noise on taste perception, this could be even a public health issue when we think about how loud canteens for kids at schools can be um, yes. or, or in, in, in collective dining um, uh, contexts where there is a lot of noise. And so we need to season more with the unhealthy ingredients. Um, and so that kind of gets us used to eating um, higher in salt um, or, or high in sugar in certain, in certain uh, uh, spaces. So it's, it's really kind of fundamental to, to be aware of our senses when we eat. Exactly. Um, when people, as we get older, start to lose our sense of smell, and people in that age group usually say, the food doesn't taste as good as it used to. Mm. They reach for more salt which is mm. bad because it increases the risk of stroke, heart disease. Yes. So instead we need to make the food more flavorful by adding umami. And maybe you can say something about umami. Yes, uh, well, there's so many things. I mean, we could talk about ours for this, um, but umami in particular, right? We, we tend to demonize uh, MSG, right? And think that it's something that's bad for you that has um, negative health uh, impact. Um, and when really umami can actually be uh, a, a well, it is a kind of structural uh, component of deliciousness um, and it carries on aromas. It um, actually makes uh, foods that are lower in sodium more enjoyable, lower in, sh in sweet more enjoyable. And there's a synergistic effect between different ingredients that can create what we call delicious. Um, and so uh, it is really one of the, the, the secret uh, kind of uh, wisdoms to, to, to achieve is to really kind of how to create umami um, for to create delicious foods. Um, but there is there's so much more to talk about about umami, I think you. Well, maybe we, should, maybe we yeah. should talk about umami next time if we're going to do another yeah, of but, these. But now, yeah, you, so you mentioned, so when we're losing sense of smell, whether it is now, and maybe folks uh, who are watching this uh, may have um, uh, COVID-19 right now and, um, or maybe people kind of in with uh, certain uh, health conditions uh, or aging population. So how can we make food better for, with this multisensory insights um, that is not adding sweet, adding sugar? Yeah, we, 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 we could try to do that. But the main thing that we're doing through food, and as you said, it can be, when we talked earlier, it can be a Trojan horse. It's to remind people of their senses so I was lucky enough to work with um, the artist uh, Oliver Eliasson at one of his uh, workshops at his studio and we had a multi-sensory dinner. And he said, ah, by making people experience smell and taste and touch and concentrate on it, you're, you're part of the, I see you as part of the counter numbness movement. And counter thought, numbness. Oh, wow, counter numbness. But he's right. We've become quite numb by being in front of computer screens and just thinking audio visually. We forget when so much of our life is digital that it's leaving out taste, touch and smell. And we have to find a way to democratize our awareness, engagement and enhancement so that we're connected to our senses, so that we, we live better lives. We, we enjoy yeah. ourselves and our experience more. I love that. I'm, I'm definitely on that team of the counter numbness movement. You um, are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> and so one last thing that I, that I wanted to, to raise is, um, so uh, we often think of uh, reality or kind of our senses being five, but really those are the kind of, we call them the canonical senses, the, the basic senses, that, um, but th there is more, right? So for yeah. instance, um, in terms of flavor, especially when we're losing sense of smell, um, uh, trigeminal stimulation is fundamental, right? And we find it in several ingredients. Uh, do you want to talk a bit more about... about yeah, it's, it's my favorite subject, the trigeminal nerve. So this is the fifth cranial nerve and it serves the eyes, the nose and the mouth. And it's the one that rings bells when you have too much wasabi and you get the pain at the bridge of your nose. It makes peppermint taste cool in the mouth. It makes mustard or horseradish taste hot and chilies, of course. So this is, this is in spices that give you the tingle, the burn, the cooling sensation. And when much else is lost, uh, you can give yourself, be careful, use the dosage right, but you can give yourself these sensations. And that's another part of flavor. So many cuisines and cultures that are rich in spices, as you know, 
And this is a mm. great addition to taste and touch and smell. Uh, absolutely, and it's also an indicator of key nutrients for yeah. a healthy diet, right? Um, yeah. When we think about ginger, fresh ginger or horseradish and, and all these treasures, so we would have evolved the sensation and the pleasure uh, with the, the trigeminal nerve. Uh, we evolved to like these sensations because they're good for us in the end, right? Yeah. So the it's, more it's a, rich... It's also why our eyes water when we have too much spice because the trigeminal nerve thinks the eyes are being attacked uh -huh. and so it floods them to protect them. So oh, that's interesting. a good measure of how, how you can regulate your own amount. Mm, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, um, thank you so much, Barry, for this. Uh, I think we're going to keep it short so that way uh, folks can share it and, um, um, and really, well, reach out to, to Barry through his Twitter at uh, um, uh, SmithBarryC, right? Yes. And you, and, as, and you give yours as well? Yeah, so I'm um, I'm on Instagram mostly, but also on Twitter, um, Charles X Michelle, um, and uh, yeah, I hope to be seeing you soon, Barry. And thank you so much for your time. A pleasure. Let's talk again. Thanks, Charles. Bye. Yes.